Okay. Welcome to 91.9 Public Affairs and APSU TV. I'm Micah Terrell. The Wilbur N. Daniel African American Cultural Center is one of the lesser known treasures of our campus here at Austin P. And the center is celebrating a new face, Director Harold Wallace III. Harold, thank you so much for stopping by and joining us today. Thank you for having me. So to start with, you're from California, right? Yes. So it's a different culture and here in Tennessee, of course, different too. What have you noticed about the, the differences between uh, what we do here in, in Tennessee and, and of course out west? Um, well, the, the weather uh, for sure is a big thing. Um, I think the uh, starting on, on August 12th, that was my first day and that humidity uh, was totally different than what I'm used to in Los Angeles, um, but I did also uh, just come from Kansas and so I was a little bit used to some of that that different type of heat uh, but I was super happy to come here and the weather be nice and then I also uh, knew that it was a big thing for me to get to a place where it didn't snow as much as it did in Kansas and so I'm happy to deal with that little bit of snow that we had just a little bit ago but as far as the campus um, just super excited to really have an opportunity to um, see a bigger campus. I came from a campus that was around 7,000 students and so being here with around 12,000 students is super awesome because they're um, just so different and so uh, being from the West Coast and then being used to maybe our Midwestern students uh, but then now having an opportunity to really work with some of our students from the South and so I'm super excited for that opportunity. And from what work you did, um, you really worked a lot in diversity. Talk yes. about how that experience is helping you uh, with the African American Cultural Center. So it's, it's been pretty awesome to come from a, a background in diversity and working with so many different cultures, uh, but now having an opportunity to work with some of our African American uh, African American students um, has been awesome. But I'll, the thing I love about the, the center itself is that it is titled that, but we help so many students from different backgrounds. And so I'm super excited to have that opportunity. And so it's been really cool to have that opportunity to uh, have that background in diversity, but now being able to be here and implement some of that um, diversity love I have into this African American Culture Center is super awesome. And so um, our tech checkout is super, is, is a great thing that I love about our office because um, that serves over around 200 students that have an opportunity to maybe make their way through college without having to buy a laptop. And so that's a really big deal. Um, and then when you look at the students that come in, they're from all different backgrounds. And so we're able to help all these students who need it. And so I'm super excited for that opportunity. Yeah, and that's a great thing that I don't think a lot of people know about. So tell yeah. us a little bit more about the tech checkout that students can do. So um, it's something that I've never seen before on any other campus, um, especially on this scale. I've seen some programs that were able to give 20 to 30 uh, different computers, but to have this program have so many computers um, that are available for our students, it's almost one of those those secrets that we kind of have to keep a secret because we, we can't serve everyone, but we're super happy um, to serve the population that really needs it. And so um, when it comes to our advertisement for that, we always have it on our website and it's one of our things that stays on our website um, throughout the whole semester. So students can, if they didn't know about it for the fall, they will have an opportunity to, to go for one for the spring. And it is on an application basis. Mm -hmm. And so once you send that application in, uh, my administrative assistant, who's pretty awesome, will actually make sure that she sends you back and says, hey, come pick up your laptop during this time period. And so it's super great. Um, and I just love, I, I remember being one of those students who didn't have a laptop for about a year and a half. And so uh, you have to use those labs, which are always great because sometimes it's good to kind of meet new people um, in those labs. But when you are dependent on those labs, um, sometimes it gets tough, especially being a college student, and we understand procrastination uh, mm -hmm. sometimes happens. <laughs> and oh, so. sometimes, yes, right, that last one, <laughs> you're like, oh no, that paper's due, exactly. and then you have to go to the lab, and it's, what exactly. if it's busy, right? Or what if it's closed? Or closed yeah. And so, yeah, I love that we have that option for our students. Yeah, and so what are some of the other things? I understand there's a, mm -hmm. the full kitchen, lots of other features. Yes. So let us know, because again, a lot of people, a lot of new freshmen don't mm -hmm. know what's, what's there. Well, um, we do, we are one of the um, centers on campus that does have a, a full kitchen, which um, is awesome in itself, because we love to be able to do certain events that involve baking and cooking. And so uh, one of our big events that we're actually about to have soon is our Windac Giving, which is our Thanksgiving um, meal that we have. And it's awesome because we have an opportunity to, one, cook um, for our students, 
But it's, it's one thing to cook for a small family, and it's one thing to cook for yourself. But when you cook for a huge population um, and keeping that same flavor, those things are really yeah. important. And so having an opportunity to do that with our student staff um, is super cool. And so um, that's one of our awesome programs that we have. And then we also have our series called Cupcakes and Canvas. And so what that is is an opportunity for students to enjoy a nice little small treat, but also have an opportunity to paint a great picture with one of our, stu our very own art students that teach you step by step how to paint that picture. And so um, I love those events. Right now they are on a limited basis. And so we only have 15 to 20 spots available each one. But when students understand that that's a continuous thing that we do, um, they're ready to sign up for that next month. And so I love having that opportunity um, but the, one of the biggest things that I really love about our space is our lunchtime forums. Uh, we are like rebranding them to uh, kind of calling them what's the tea so we can talk about hot topics that are super important um, to our student population. And so I do my very best to make sure that I'm talking to my student staff and other students that come in about topics that they really want to touch on. Um, and in that situation, students get a chance to eat from 11 and 2 and have a great dialogue as well about stuff that really matters to them. Right, because as we all know, everybody's got to have some lunch in yes. there some, yes. sometimes, so that's <laughs> awesome to have. Now, what are some of the topics that you're considering possibly for those uh, forums? Um, well, um, since they are a monthly um, thing, and we usually try to have them at least probably every three weeks or so, um, our, we've had some in the past, and they were touching on issues with homophobia within uh, people of color and how we can kind of help break down that homophobia. Um, and being more accepting of our LGBTQI um, brothers and sisters. And so for that, um, those type of topics are really tough to have conversations about, but there are people that want to talk about it. And so we need to make sure that we're having those tough conversations. Um, in February, that, which, that will be like History Month, but I also plan on making sure that we do um, a series that talks about um, how love still exists in today's world. And so I plan on doing my very best to get us a young um, college undergraduate couple that has had at least a year of time uh, with each other, but then also having that young married couple and then also having that couple that's been together plenty of years. And so that we can kind of talk about the things that we go through um, at the different levels in life and how we can really make it from being that one year couple to that 25 year old couple or 25-year couple. Right, because, I mean, as you mentioned, there's a, there's a lot of challenges, obstacles, no matter, you know, what your age is, yes. typically for younger couples, especially yes. college age, uh, very stressful, right? Yes. School, work, you know. Social media. Social media, <laughs> that right. Changes a, that changes a lot when it comes to relationships, for sure. Right. And if you're just joining us, um, I'm Micah Terrell with 91.9 Public Affairs and APSU-TV. I'm talking with the new director of the Wilbur and Daniel African American Cultural Center. It's Harold Wallace III. Harold, again, thank you for, for joining us. So Harold was telling us about some great upcoming events mm -hmm. and everything, and the topics for the lunchtime forums really sound some very re relatable stuff mm -hmm. for, for everybody yes. uh, and everything. What about, um, you know, lots of great uh, things for students. What about staff and faculty? Are there some um, things for them as well at the AACC? So um, the, the big thing for me is uh, when I got here, a big thing I wanted to do was create relationships, and that, that being majority students. I'm very student-centered, and so I wanted to do my best to meet as many students as possible. But there are certain resources out here that um, if I don't tap into them and build relationships outside our center, then our students may not have an opportunity to get to. And so for me, uh, now I'm in a, a time frame where I have an opportunity to start to, to get to know more of our faculty um, and our staff and kind of how they're interested in actually doing some work with our center. And so for me, um, it's important to get out there as much as possible and get to know some of these people and not um, always through email. You know, sometimes it's important to make sure that you get out face to face and get to know people because um, we can all read emails however we want to read them depending on how we're feeling that day. Right, <laughs> right. So um, I think that there are plenty of opportunities that I want to make sure that we're doing our best to expose our students to. And so um, if we have our students that are interested in political science, I'd love to have some people come um, that can talk to them about some of the their options um, of what they can do for a living with political science because some people instantly think political science means I'm going into office. I'm trying to get into office somehow, some way, or into government. And so um, helping people understand those things has to come from somebody that they truly can relate. And so we try our best to find people in those different departments that truly have um, a gift at speaking to the population that I'm trying to serve. And so uh, that's something that I plan on doing here pretty soon is trying to get everybody involved 
Um, Because for me, it's all about the students and doing what I can to make sure I can serve the students as best as possible. Right, and you did a lot of work. I mean, your prior uh, university Mm -hmm. experience with advising, right? So this is kind of, I guess, kind of helping with that that in your wheelhouse there, right? Yes, exactly. Definitely. Um, It's different here not uh, not being an advisor for um, a Black Student Association or a Native American Student Association or uh, an organization I used to be a part of, which which is Hispanics of Today. And so I have that love there for all of these different cultures. Um, But now since I can't actually, or it's not that I can't, but I haven't had a chance yet to actually advise an organization, I do my part to make sure that I'm advising all of them as much as I can. So when students come in from different e-boards from our organizations, I try to talk to them and say, hey, we want your um, organizations to come do programs here within our office because then that helps me get an opportunity to get to meet them and do everything I can for them. Yeah, now uh, speaking of different groups that you've helped, uh, you did a TED talk not too long ago mm-hmm. that talked about diversity and, and mm-hmm. you know, how do we deal with diversity, how do we increase it, and you had a great, um, uh, I guess, metaphor about it's um, diversity is not a melting pot, yeah. it's a salad, a salad bowl. bowl. So talk yes. about that, that was a great, great um, illustration you used. So um, I used to to always think of diversity as like this awesome just mixture of us all. Uh, but when it comes to the melting pot, like mixture um, kind of <laughs> mentality, you don't always appreciate everyone's differences. And so that's what it really comes down to is, is not only noticing our differences and engaging our differences, but also appreciating them. And so you can only appreciate something that you learn about. And so I think that that's why it's important. I love having the different cultural centers that we have on campus because they serve the population that they serve, but then it's also an opportunity for some education so that we can all appreciate each other. And so I think that those are uh, the salad bowl thing. I love to taste that salad so that I can um, taste my lettuce and I can taste my tomato and I can taste my onion and whatever else you love in your salad, but you can all taste them individually in your mouth when you taste them. So, um, and it comes together great, so yeah. Definitely, and that I think if you could get maybe more people to understand that kind mm-hmm. of you know thought process, because obviously as a university you have this great you know capability of learning more about different cultures mm-hmm. and everything. How do you think the AAC, AACC plays into that 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 education and learning more about each other? Um, I think that it's 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 all about making sure that one uh, for the center for me is big on making sure that we create this home away from home atmosphere for our students of color. Um, but then also there's a big part of it that has to do with educating campus because we really want to make sure that um, our students who are African American are able to leave the institution better than they came. And so uh, we, it's definitely super important to make sure that some of our APSU graduates um, are going out to the workplace and um, being more culturally competent because we don't want any of our students to lose their job because they accidentally say something that's insensitive. Um, And so it's important to make sure that we do our best to change the climate of campus for the better. And so I love to always think about what programs can we put on to help educate the campus to make sure that when they come, um, they're gonna leave better than when they came. Right, and I think you bring up a good point too about how there's just you know, always a need to to keep mm-hmm. learning more oh, yeah. um, about not just race, but there's gender, like you mentioned, exactly. sexuality, everything that's involved. Um, and, and obviously that's, that's a great um, thing to learn about. And how, um, again, your, your um, experience with, uh, with, with, with advising and racial mm-hmm. diversity, how, how does that play in, do you think, into, I guess, looking ahead to the future is what mm-hmm. I'm asking about looking, looking forward. Um, I think that it's important to, to truly understand that the world is, is it's constantly changing. And so if you, um, this is one thing I always say, I never want anybody to feel uh, so confident in one subject that they call themselves an expert. Because once you get to that level, um, you almost think that you're done growing and you're, th- you're done learning. And so for me, um, diversity is one of those things that you can never truly be an expert on it because the second that you feel that you are, something has changed the very next day. And so it's important to just understand it as this fluid growing thing that continuously grows and evolves. And so that's what I feel like we need to make sure that we're doing the best to, to create this opportunity to um, build students up in a way to where they truly are understanding that I am doing this college thing so that I can make sure that I finish strong, get this bachelor's, but the continue, the, the learning is continuous and that it's something that it's a, it's a journey in itself. And so I want to, us to make sure that we're doing our best to help students understand that although you're done here and your time may be up, I still want you to continuously keep pouring into yourself and pouring into others as well to make sure that they're learning and you're learning as well.
Yeah, learning should never stop, right? It should never stop. Never it stop. can't stop. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Harold, for yeah, stopping by. Thank you. Um, for students who, again, who may not know, well, the Wilbur and Daniel African American Cultural Center is in the Clement um, building, so let them yes. know where it is. It is in Clement 120. So we are the, we have a nice, pretty sign right in front of our building um, that says Wilbur and Daniel African American Cultural Center, and it is the door that some students accidentally go into that are trying to go to the Clement, but it's never an accident when you come in there. So we want students to feel comfortable, um, even if they're just walking through to their class, we do our best to make sure that we speak um, so that they're a little bit more willing to come in the next time and actually speak. So so those things are important for us. Great. So and Clement 120. 120. And if they want to find you on the website? Um, yes. You can come to the website. We are at apsu.edu slash WNDAACC. All right. That's the WINDAC. That's the nickname for our center. Great. Yeah. Harold, again, thank you so much. Yeah. Harold Wallace III, and I'm Micah Terrell with 91.9 Public Affairs and APSU TV.